Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest today is Claire Lopez. She's the Senior Vice President for Research and Analysis at the Center for Security Policy. Uh, she's a friend of American Truth Project. She brings a wealth of knowledge to the show. Welcome back, Claire. Thank you, Barry. Very glad to be back with you, as always. Uh, terrific to have you. Let's jump into it. There's news out of Washington about how our country is being protected and advised and by whom. Um, you have educated us a bunch on care. Before we get into the news that has just been announced, uh, tell our viewers again, who is CARE and why should we be worried? Right, so CARE stands for Council on American Islamic Relations. And it is the US branch of Hamas, literally which itself is the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. CARE was founded here in the United States in 1994, and the Department of Justice listed it, named it, as an unindicted co-conspirator in the 2008 Holy Land Foundation Hamas terror funding trial. So, you and I both know this. These are some really bad guys with an agenda that doesn't track with freedom, equality, and equal protection under the law for non-believers in America. So tell me, as bad as that is, let's start talking about care in more detail. Nihad Awad, their CEO or president or whatever, tell us about his background. So Nihad Awad is the executive director of CARE, has been since its founding in 1994. Uh, there were three of the top Hamas officials in the U.S. at that time that together founded CARE. The other two, Rafiq Jaber and Omar Ahmed, uh, are no longer in the country. Uh, but Nihad Awad is. And uh, not only does he lead CARE um, as the executive director of CARE, um, he and CARE are the top, the leading organization uh, within the Muslim Brotherhood political umbrella group in the United States that's called the U.S. CMO, United States Council of Muslim Organizations, kind of a group of groups, of brotherhood front groups. Okay, we know the Muslim Brotherhood. We know Hamas. These are terrorists that want Sharia for all of us whether we like it or not. They're an unindicted co-conspirator in a huge trial that sent a lot of bad guys to prison for a very long time for raising money for a known terror group to carry out, carry out terrorism. How is it possible, Claire, that CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, is now training Customs and Border Patrol? Is that yeah. true? Yep, read and weep. So here, here is partly what happened. The Holy Land Foundation Hamas terror funding trial concluded in 2008. We'll recall that that was a presidential election year and that the Obama administration took office the next January, 2009. The prosecutors from the Department of Justice had all the over 200 and something unindicted co-conspirators on their list from that trial, all teed up, ready to go after them each in turn. But with the change in administration and a new attorney general coming in, Eric Holder, all of that was put on hold. Nothing was followed up on. I'll mention very quickly here that the statute of limitations on material support to terrorism, which is what the Holy Land Foundation Hamas terror funding trial was about, the statute of limitations is eight years. We are speaking here, November 2019. So, so the, time, the time has run out. In that particular sense, yes. The other thing is that 
uh, the, the, the groups that were named as unindicted co-conspirators, Muslim Brotherhood front groups, changed their MO, uh, as one might expect, uh, after such a blow as, as the Holy Land Foundation trial was. And um, they now keep the money they raise here in the United States at mosques and Islamic centers, zakat, um, and, and conferences and, and so forth. They keep it here. They're not sending it overseas as they were before the Holy Land Foundation trial. So there's that. These things have changed. They're not terrorist groups. They're seditious, subversive, jihadist groups. And that is what we need to think of and keep in mind as we, as we look at this. So Claire, you're not the only one that knows this. The Trump administration is fully staffed by people that have informed the president of this. How in the world did this group end up becoming a training organization for Customs and Border Patrol? Well, uh, unfortunately, the first part setup of your question, to the best of my knowledge, is not true at all. There is nobody, not one single person, not one single unit, agency in the entire United States government whose job it is right now for many years since, to monitor the Muslim Brotherhood, to go after it, to, to assess it as a, a seditious, uh, hostile enemy uh, force in America. None, nobody. So the idea is, well, it's just some benevolent organization that understands Islam, they can train our well, immigration I, I security we're, people? We're, we're um, a little off from, from your your question about how they got to train uh, the Customs and Border Protection, but let me set it up with this. And that is that going all the way back to 9-11 during the Bush administration, very shortly after 9-11, uh, the beginning of something many of us call the Great Purge began. And that was due to the already heavy penetration by Muslim Brotherhood front groups into the United States government and senior national security uh, circles. And what happened is that even under President Bush, but certainly thereafter under President Obama, all training curricula, the syllabuses, the PowerPoints, the presentations and the instructors that went with them that could have and, and used to previously did teach about the connection between Islamic doctrine, law, scripture, and its inspirational role for Islamic terror, all that was removed, removed completely from the entire training curriculum of the entire US government. That's the great purge. And guess who advised all of the different departments, cabinet departments, intelligence community agencies? Guess who advised them on what ought to go because it was, you know, offensive? Care. Muslim Brotherhood groups were appointed as advisors to supervise that purge. That's how things can happen now. And you're telling me, you know it, our viewers know it, and the Trump administration doesn't? It doesn't seem so that they know it. Um, I realize the Trump administration has a lot of things on its plate. They've been deliberately distracted and, and, and deterred from their, you know, their, their chosen agenda, what they would like to do uh, over these last three years. I, I understand all of that, but no, to the best of my knowledge, this particular piece of it um, is simply not being addressed. Claire, you've scared the heck out of me, and we're going to get into it more in the next episode. Um, I have no words. It makes no sense. We put the chickens in a hen house guarded by the foxes, and we're, we're looking away as if, oh, don't worry, everything will be fine. I don't have a warm and fuzzy feeling about this at all. No, me neither. Thanks for joining us on American Truth Project. And a special thanks to Claire Lopez for her insight. We'll be back with another episode to continue very shortly. Please text the word TRUTH to 88202. 
88202. You'll get all of our episodes, including this one on your cell phone. It's always free and you'll always be informed without missing a thing. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thank <laughs> you.